In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters. I'm here again uh, to raise awareness about uh, vaccination and what the church has to say. And today, I'm here to answer an important question, which I've been receiving a lot, uh, which is, uh, why speak so much about vaccinations, right? So there's a question, is there, should the church uh, even speak on certain topics, right? Why can't we just focus about the Bible, about our relationship with God and, and leave the social aspect to, to the world? Uh, well, I'm here to answer that question from a biblical perspective and not just about vaccinations, but what is the position of the church in this world and what is it supposed to do? Uh, I believe questions like, uh, like this, which is, is, does the church have an authority to speak on issues like vaccination stems from a misconception of, of, uh, of the church, not realizing what the authority of the churches in this world. When we look at the Bible, starting from the Old Testament, we recognize initially that the Bible was concerned not only about our relationship with God, but how we ought to live in this world, including our dietary needs and our health. Uh, of course, as we all know, the Bible is, is, is full of passages saying what we should eat and what we should not eat. Now, in the Ethiopian Orthodox Sahara Church, we often think about what we cannot eat and, and we say things like, why can't we eat pork? Why can't we eat this? Why can't we? But if you really look at the whole list of the things that the Bible told us not to eat, we really shouldn't be eating these things. Like some of them are not healthy. And the reason why the Bible, like God is not concerned about you eating certain animals over another one. He's concerned about your health. And part of the reason why the Bible includes these animals not to eat is because they're not healthy. This is a big proponent, a uh, position and reason why the Bible uh, dictates certain things, even if we don't understand it, because it's there to guide our spiritual with our fleshly needs. So the Bible is not there just to, 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 to tell our soul what to do. It's there to make sure our flesh is doing well as well. Uh, also, now that's not just for the Old Testament. When you look in the New Testament, Paul, who spent a lot of time uh, telling Christians how to connect with Christ, does give medical advice as well, which goes past Pray and fast. For example, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, he says, No longer drink only water, but take a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. So this is wine, wine not to get drunk, but because uh, 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 Timothy had um, sickness, uh, a stomach ache. So he was t saying, look, 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 there's this thing that you can take to make your stomach, uh, stomach ache go away. So he's giving him medical advice. He's not just telling him, read your Bible, but he's saying, look, there are things you can do to, to help your flesh. So, so even from the Genesis, the Bible was there to make sure that our flesh is doing well. It wasn't just concerned about our soul, but it was concerned about our flesh as well. We see this also in uh, passages from Fetahan Agast. Of course, the Fetahan Agast was used by a lot of Ethiopians, especially uh, for the past six, seven hundred years. Uh, and of course, now you see a lot of people uh, using it within the Ethiopian Orthodox Sohadu Church. But if you read it, the Fetahan Agast carefully, it says, because it is the flesh that moves the, it is the soul that moves the flesh. It moves it. So the whole Fetahanagast, the, 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 the book that we mention all the time, you know, when you're ever debating somebody, you don't know where it came from, you always say, well, the Fetahanagast says so, right? That's what we always say. Well, the Fetahanagast in itself is a compilation of rules and conducts of how we should behave, not just for our soul, 
but also for the flesh. Now, the church was definitely vocal about how we should behave in this world. Of course, that is what the church is, after all, a model of the heavenly sanctuary in this world. Historically, the church has always been vocal about how we ought to live in this world. It has been active about social issues. It's been active about uh, family issues. It's been active all over the place. Think about what the church does in our community. When a husband and a wife uh, get in a fight, where do they turn to? The church, their confession father. The confession father doesn't say, hey, pray and fast only. He says that, but that's not the only thing he, he does. He sits there and he plays the role of a therapist. Uh, and that's because the church expands its territory about just uh, over everything. It oversees just about every subject there is. It gets into philosophy. It gets into engineering. If you read the book of Noah, God is instructing him how to build an ark that should house all the animals and all the living creatures into this world. It gets into the work of architecture. It gets into the work of medicine as well. So now here we are in the 21st century. We are part of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tohanu Church that champions to accept medicine. We say this all the time. We say the church is accepting of, of medicine. Of course, we cite Luke who was an, a, a physician of his time. Well, now we're faced with an opportunity and a social issue that is about medicine. Surely, surely at this time, the church must speak up. The church must speak up. So for all of those who are questioning whether or not the church has a place to speak up or not, it absolutely must speak up, especially in a situation where uh, people don't know what to do. The church is there to guide. By the way, I happen to be an English-speaking deacon within the Ethiopian Orthodox Tohara Church. But if you look at uh, around you, bishops have spoken up. Priests has, have spoken up. Maybe you don't have the, the, the right resource for that. So this is not me, something that I'm just coming out and saying on my own, but this is something the church has sanctioned, has spoken up, and the church being our mother surely will care about our health and, and give us the right guidance into what we ought to do in a time where people are lost. Now, this is not a video to get into the, the medical component of the vaccination. So I'll leave that to another video and we've done that in the past, but I just wanna really solidify this uh, idea um, and, and, and let you know, look, the church is there to guide you along the way in just about everything. It's there to guide you along with your uh, school. It's there to guide you along when you get married, when you have kids. There's guidelines about what to do when you when you grow up in kids. The church doesn't ever say, look, just go away. That's your personal problem. Our problem is with you and the, the kingdom of heaven. It gets, it, it cares. The church is the mother. Surely it speaks up when it matters the most. Having said that, I want to conclude with the following real story that occurred to me nearly 10 years ago. One time I was driving late at night with friends. I was distracted and I was trying to get to somewhere. Uh, and I was speeding across and I was trying to make a left turn. And I was making this left turn. There was a car coming this way and we were about to get into a head collision. And I remember the mo moment like it was yesterday. Like I said, I was distracted. There were people in the car. And as I turned, I saw the car coming this directly at me. And I remember thinking, this is it. I'm going to die. And I got so scared. Everybody in the car screamed. And I closed my eyes not knowing what to do. And I waited and I waited and then I opened my eyes and all I know is the car like that was coming this way was on the other side of the car. I wasn't touched. I knew that day that God saved me. I knew that day that God saved me. 
I wasn't saved because I closed my eyes. I was saved through the grace of God. I wasn't ready to die. God saved me. I wasn't saved because I closed my eyes. I was saved because God saved me. So now, if I go around saying, look, you know, if I close my eyes, God will save me. If I close my eyes, God save, will save me. How many times do you think that's going to work? Is anybody willing to try it out? Close your eyes and, and, and see if God saves you. It might happen once. It might happen twice. Heck, it might happen 10 times. But eventually, you will get in an accident. Unfortunately, I see some of the comments being made on social media. People saying, I haven't gotten sick yet, or hey, I already got COVID and it wasn't that bad. Hey, look, not that many people are dying. And that's tantamount to closing your eyes. Maybe your loved one, maybe your mom, your dad, your grandfather, your grandmother has not died yet. That's closing your eyes. And God has been merciful. And God has been saving us and protecting us. But now, there are ways to protect ourselves from this horrible, horrible virus that has come along our way. Eventually, we have to open our eyes. And just because we close our eyes really, really hard does not mean the virus is gone. It might have passed us once, but if we keep on closing our eyes, we may not be that lucky. My dear brothers and sisters, please, please get the right information. Educate yourself about the virus. M most people have come up to me and said, hey, I wanna, I wanna send you this information. I wanna send you this link. I wanna send, that's fine. But what I wanna tell you is, People are coming to me to change my mind. Uh, okay, I want to tell you to take the time that you're spending to, 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 to show me all these videos. Take the time to get the data for yourself. I think some people have already closed the, the deal. And I think this is the problem. Some people have closed the agenda. They're not taking the vaccine. It doesn't matter who comes and says it. If we have this type of idea, it's tantamount to closing our eyes. The church must speak up at this point. And it is. It is speaking. There are a lot of people who are speaking up on the vaccine. And I urge my fellow Ethiopian Orthodox uh, members, deacons, fathers, bishops to speak up even louder. I, I urge uh, fellow medical professionals uh, to speak up, educate your community about what's going on. We must tackle this thing. People are dying. Uh, today, I looked at it. Uh, and I believe it was uh, nearly 750,000 cases and, 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 and uh, thousands of th around the world, around the world. Uh, thousands and thousands of people have, uh, have died. Um, th this is, we're talking about lives. It's not statistics. Uh, people are really, really, really dying. Um, I've heard comments saying, hey, you know, people getting sick are, are, are people who've been who are sick with other things, uh, compromised um, immune system. And yes, that is correct. And that is why we should do our part to make sure they don't die, right? Because it's a virus, we, we, we can pass it along. So I'm not here for myself. Um, I'm, I'm a young man, I, at least I, I like to think so. I'll be fine, I'll be fine, and I know that. I'm not worried about me. My parents, everybody in my family has gotten vaccinated. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about the individual who whose immune system is sick. I'm worried for 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 the young children, the two, three year olds who cannot be vaccinated. I'm worried for the people who don't have the right data and who may be sick at the end. I'm worried for them. We should do our part to protect them. It's not about you. It's about the other people, the weak people that we need to protect. That's what being a Christian is about. And as, Chris, as, as a church, we must speak up on social issues. The church has always spoken on, on the social issues, and that's what we must continue to do. Please, whether we're talking about the vaccine or the history of the church, ask, ask, what is the, the, how does the church function? 
Ask about the church. Ask about the history of the, how did, what does the church do? Surely this is not the first time social issues have been raised. So I go ask someone. Don't just make assumption. The same way with the vaccination. Don't just make assumption. Go ask someone. How does this work? And hopefully we can protect uh, the weak. That's what we're supposed to do. I hope you learned something. What's about the next year?